My name is Ms. Connolly. Started making videos for my fifth grade students. Decided to try to help as many students as possible. So here we are looking at third grade equivalent fractions. Um, if you have a topic you want me to cover, connollymathathome at gmail.com. I am covering topics from first to fifth grade. Nothing above there. Um, so let's get started on equivalent fractions. So when we talk about equivalent fractions, we're talking about fractions that are equal to each other. Okay, and there's several different ways to think about equivalent fractions. So first we are going to look at um, paper. <laughs> I have quite a few examples here. So in third grade, kids do a lot of discovering with pattern blocks and thinking about fractions that are equal to each other. At home right now, we don't have pattern blocks, so we are going to do our best with discovering this with um, paper. So we have one half, we have one half, okay? And we're gonna think about when I fold this paper into different sized pieces, how many pieces does it take to make an equivalent fraction with the new pieces? Okay, so we're thinking about the fraction one half, and I'm gonna fold it again. So there's one half. And I'm gonna fold it and make um, different size pieces. So let's take a peek at what happens when I fold the paper. Okay, so first magical thing happened. I did not color in anything else. No markers were in my hands. But now I have made more pieces. I currently have one, two, three, four pieces. I hope you can see the folds on the camera. Okay, but how many pieces now does it take to make half? It takes two pieces out of four total pieces to make one half. So we have our first equivalent fraction. This is the same amount, okay? So I didn't change the size of my hole. I didn't change the size of the paper, I mean. I didn't shade in anything else. But I know that 2 fourths is the same amount as 1 half because of my folding of the paper. Let's see what happens if I fold it one more time. So it's in fourths, okay? I'm going to fold it one more time, which will result in me getting eighths, just so you know. I do have a marker in my hand, but it's purple. You all see that? Nothing's, nothing tricky is happening here. But I want us thinking about now how many pieces do we have total? So what will our denominator be? And what is our numerator? Okay, so I see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. But nothing different is shaded in. So let's think about this as a pizza. And first, I cut the pizza in half. And there was this, I ate half, and another person ate half. Then I folded it into fourths, and I had two fourths, and the other person had two fourths. I still ate the same amount of pizza. And now that it's folded in eighths, I'm going to eat the four eighths, and someone else is going to eat these four eighths. I'm still eating the same amount. So we have a couple fractions here that are equivalent to one half. And we'll try another one if we have time at the end. So if you are at home right now and you want to practice folding paper and shading in part of it and then fold it again so you can discover equivalent fractions, it's a good way to think about it. Um, if you have pattern blocks at home, you can think about how many pattern blocks it takes to make another one. That's another way to think about equivalent fractions in third grade. Okay, so let's think about one fourth. So you all see one out of four equal parts shaded in. I'm going to think about how much is equal to one fourth if I fold my paper one more time. So I fold it in half. I'm wondering if, if there's any predictions about how many total pieces I might have. And here we go. When you see what happens, how many pieces now does it take to make the same amount? So this used to be one fourth, but you see it's folded right here, okay? It takes two pieces to make the same amount out of how many total pieces? I probably, wiggling it probably didn't help. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this used to be one fourth, 
Then I folded it in half and I got eight pieces and now I need two of them. So another equivalency that we see is that two eighths is equivalent to one fourth. Okay, so if you're at home and you're like, oh, well, I wonder like how much is equivalent to three fourths, you could try that on your own so you can keep exploring. Okay, let's talk about one third next. If I have one third, you guys see one out of three equal parts, and I fold it in half, I'm going to see what happens here. I'm going to fold it in half this way. Try to fold it in half. Any predictions about the total number of parts? What will our denominator be, and what will our numerator be? I hope you're thinking about it. The big reveal. So we have one third, one out of three equal parts. Now how many pieces does it take? One, two, do you see the two? Out of how many equal parts? One, two, three, four, five, six. You're noticing that when I cut the thirds in half, I end up getting six equal pieces. And I hope that you're noticing that I need two of, the of these pieces to make the same amount. Okay, so you see the two shaded in, it used to be one third. So when I make smaller pieces, it used to be thirds, then I fold it in half and the pieces got smaller, I need more of them. I need more of the pieces because they're smaller pieces. If I wanna eat the same amount and I cut it into smaller pieces, you have to eat more. Okay, so the equivalent fraction to one third is two sixths. It is the same amount shaded in of the same whole, nothing has changed. Okay, one last one with the folding of the paper. And, no, sorry, two thirds. So now I have two thirds, and I just want you to see what happens when, because all the rest of them, the numerator is one, so I wanted to do one where the, the numerator was two. I'm gonna fold it in half. And I want us thinking about the relationship here. So you know, last time I had thirds and I folded it in half. How many equal pieces I get? One, two, three, four, five, six. I get six equal pieces. Now you see I used to have two whole, uh, two thirds shaded in. Now I have one, two, three, four out of six shaded in. But the amount didn't change. Even though we've seen the numbers change, we're thinking about equal parts of the whole. Um, the amount shaded in did not change. So that's what we mean when we're talking about equivalent fractions. So one way you can explore at home is you can fold up some paper, shade in, and then fold it again and see what happens. You can even fold it another time and see what happens. You can start coming up with what rules that you think might be going on each time you fold it and discovering even more equivalent fractions. So that's one way to explore at home. Another thing that you might have to do if you're writing on paper is you might have to represent your fraction on an area model. Okay, so if I'm thinking about, for example, one half, and I wanted to find some equivalent fractions to one half, maybe I want to split it this way. So you know the purple represented one half. How many, um, what fractions represented now? One, two, three, out of one, two, three, four, five, six. So that's another way to explore equivalent fractions. Nothing changed about what I shaded in. All I did was create more equal parts, and then I counted how many were shaded in of my new equal parts. Okay, so let's look at, so that's one way to think about it. Let's say that you have one third shaded in. I'm just putting it over there to show you you can shade anywhere you want. And you wanted to split this 
to make an equivalent fraction. We see the blue represents one third. This is a third, this is a third, this is a third. But when I split those thirds, each of them got split in half, I have now two of the smaller pieces, and six are smaller, I have two of the smaller pieces shaded in. Okay, so that's another way that you could be exploring equivalent fractions at home, but always make sure you're still making equal parts, okay? This is not showing equal parts because these ones up here are a lot um, smaller than this down here. So if you are exploring on paper, just make sure that you're making equal parts, okay? Because fractions are equal parts of a whole. Um, and just so you know here, what I just did, still equal all of them. I made one, two, three, four out of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. Okay, so you can fold or make lines as many times as you want and start seeing the relationship between numbers because it is fun and something that we explore in fourth and fifth grade. Um, and that's another way to do it. But there's still one more way to think about equivalent fractions. And it's a video that I made um, about representing numbers on the number line. Okay, two things that you can do. You can uh, make the number, you can compare the fractions on the same number line, or you can um, make two number lines, but the thing is that they have to be the same exact size, because we're talking about the same whole. Okay, so I'll do it on the same number line and on separate ones. So if I'm thinking about one half, I'm going to label it there, okay? I can do that on the bottom. And then if I wanted to see what's equivalent to one half when I'm talking about fourths, maybe I want to do one fourth, two fourths, three fourths, one fourth, two fourths, same place on the number line, three fourths. So when I make four equal parts, two fourths and one half happen in the same place, okay? Sometimes it's easier to see on a separate number line. So let me see if I can think about sixths. What's equivalent with six? So if I split my number line into six equal parts, one six, two six, three six, four six, five six. Again, oh, the way to see this is that I have my number lines lined up zero and zero, one, and one, I made six equal parts the best I could. Up here, I made two equal parts the best I could. And we see, oops, the best that we can. We see that one half and three sixths are the same distance from zero on the number line. Okay, so one, three ways to be exploring this at home. You can do the paper folding, you can do the area model, and cut the pieces into, cut into smaller pieces and see how much it takes to make the same amount. Or you can think about the number line, but when you're doing that, you need to make sure that your number line has the same size holes. We can't compare fractions unless we're talking about the same exact size holes. Okay, so that is some of the exploration. If you have pattern blocks at home, go for it. If you have a link to the math investigations games, it's called Fraction Cookies, Making Fraction Cookies. So explore all the fraction cookie games practice making equivalent fractions with your family. Um, but when we're thinking about equivalent fractions, it's the same amount, even though the numerator and denominator might look different. So you wanna be thinking about what makes the same amount of one whole, okay? Um, there's also some equivalent fraction videos for the upper grades if you're ready to explore that too. Bye.